Hello everybody and welcome back again to unit 5 of grade 10 4. Okay, uh, now we're going to take a look at one of the first grammar topics of this unit. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about relative pronouns. And before we go on uh, doing some exercises so that we can understand a bit better of relative pronouns. Uh, it is important to understand these two words and how they are combined so that we understand a little bit better its usage. Okay, so if we divide this, this expression, we have the word relative and the word pronounced. So taking the first word relative, it means that we are talking about something that's going to make a relationship, a connection between one or more than one things, okay? So this is a very important piece of information because sometimes people don't understand relative pronouns because they, don't, they can't see this idea of connection, okay? And the second word, pronoun, is very very important as well because what is a pronoun pronouns are out there in all languages when i say a pronoun for example i you he she it all of these words they are pronouns but what is the function of a pronoun this is the most important question a pronoun is used to substitute or to replace a noun, right? So, for example, when I say I am Brazilian, okay, I am substituting Rafael, which is my name, by the word I. Otherwise, I would say the sentence Rafael is Brazilian. But then you can ask, who is Rafael? Now you can see that Rafael is my name, so that's why I use I. So the pronoun is substituting a noun, a name in this case. Okay, so with this in mind, I want us to do this first exercise here only. And just like we have been doing in the past uh, units, I want you to Complete the sentences from the article on page 49. So, and later we're going to complete the rule, okay? So, uh, this is Pagu, okay, my dog. She loves being in the videos as well. Uh, so, you are going to go back to the text. You're going to pause the video here. Go back to the text, the one about Everybody loves stories, but why? And then you're going to find the sentences here, these four sentences, and you're going to complete the sentences exactly like they are in the text. Okay, so again, pause the video, go back to the text, find the sentences and complete them here with the correct words. Then come back and we're going to check. Is that okay? So, let's do it. All right. Could you find the sentences? I hope you could, because now we're going to complete them according to the text, okay? So, number one, if you go back to the text here, you have the text, right? So, a group of Neanderthals are sitting around the fire in the cave. Where they've just finished eating a big meal together. Then, number two, he wants to get some berries, which he wants to share with everybody. Three, what about that friend who's great at telling jokes and anecdotes? And four, they come from previous generations. Whose 
wisdom and knowledge they contain. Okay, so again, let's check. So, well done. Remember, these are exactly like the sentences in the text. Now, let's go back here to the rule. Something really important about the rule. Okay, so we have, we use relative clauses to give extra information. And we use, and we have to complete the rule with the same words that we used in exercise number one. But the important part is here. This uh, two spaces here, not all the time they are going to be used, uh, both of them, okay? You are not going to need the two spaces to answer. I'm sorry about that. This is something here on the book, okay? But the rule is a bit different. So what I want you to do, I want you to go back here. Let's go back to the sentences. So we have where, which, who, and whose, right? What is important about these words? These words, as we talked in the very beginning, they are being used because they need to create a relationship, right? A connection. And also because they are replacing names, okay? They are replacing the nouns. Remember, pronouns. So, for example, in sentence number one, a group of Neanderthals are sitting around the fire in the cave where they just finished eating a big meal together. What do you think where is substituting here? What does it refer to? What's the connection that where makes? So here we can see that where is talking or is relating to in the cave, right? Because where refers to places. For example, in the question, where are you from, right? In number two, we have, he wants to get some berries, which he wants to share with everybody. What does which substitutes here? The word berries. This is the noun that which is referring to and making the connection, okay? In number three, we have, what about that friend? Who's great at telling jokes and anecdotes? So the word who is referring to the word friend, okay? Because as you know, I can ask you, who are you? Okay, so who usually refers to a person. And finally, they come from previous generations whose wisdom and knowledge they contain. So, here we can see that who is in the word, so it's referring to people. But not only it is referring to people, we are talking, when we use the word whose, the pronoun whose, we are talking about what people have, their belongings. For example, in the question, whose book is this? So. Who is the person who has this book? Who is the person who bought the book? Who is the person who is the owner of the book? Okay, so who's talks about possessions, all right? So, with this information in mind, I want you now to go back to the rule and try to complete the rule with the words that we used over here, okay? And again, we have spaces, but not necessarily we are going to use the spaces all the time, okay? So be aware of that. Maybe here you are going to use just one space, okay? So 
pause the video and try to complete the rule now. All right, guys, so could you complete the rule? I hope it wasn't that difficult, okay? But let's think it over together, okay? And then later we're gonna check it all complete. So number one, we have to refer to people. Which one, which of the words we used in exercise number one, refer to people? The word, the word is who, right? So, all the time I am referring back to talk about a person, I am going to use the word who. Two, we have two spaces to refer to things. So, what are two words that we can use to refer back to things? Remember, in this case here, Sentence number two was referring back to two things, right? So berries are considered things. So in this case here, we can use which, but also the word that, right? So here you can complete the two spaces. The first space can be with the word which, and with the word, the second space with the word that, all right? Number three, to refer to possessions. So remember, we talked about in number four, because here we are talking about the generations, right? And But these generations, they had something, they possessed something, which was wisdom and knowledge, okay? So when we are referring to possessions, we use the word whose. Okay, W-H-O-S-E, right? So, in number three, you are going to use only one space, okay? And number four, we have to refer to places. So, remember sentence number one, where was referring to in a cave, which is a place. So, when we want to refer back to places, we need to use the word where, okay? Let's take a look at the rule completed. So here we have who. We use who to refer to people. We use that and which to refer to things. We use whose to refer to possessions. And we use where to refer to places, okay? So, thinking about this, I want you now to try to do this exercise number, uh, this exercise here. In the page, it's exercise number two, okay? So, what you have to do? You have to combine the sentences by replacing the underlined words with a relative pronoun, okay? So we have the relative pronouns here, where, which, who, and whose, okay? And we have the sentences. So let's check. I'm going to do number one together with you, and then later you're going to pause the video and try to do numbers two, three, four, and five, okay? So in number one, we have one of the world's greatest storytellers is Stephen King. He has sold more than 400 million books. Wow, that's a lot of books. So what we have to do, instead of having two separate sentences, we need to connect the information from two sentences in only one. Okay, so here what we can do, we can say that one of the world's greatest storytellers is Stephen King, who has sold more than 400 million books. Okay? So, could you see what I did? So instead of 
putting a period after uh, after Stephen King, right? So period, new sentence, right? I am connecting all the information from two sentences in one uh, into one only, right? So here I have one of the world's greatest storytellers is Stephen King, who has sold more than 400 million books. Who has sold more than 400 million books? It's Stephen King, right? You can be asking questions to see if the information fits with your option, okay? So then what's your challenge now? You need to do the same thing, connect the two sentences using these words here in sentences number two, three, four, and five. Let's take a look at the sentence. So two, many people love his horror stories, period. The horror stories are often quite shocking. Three, the best storyteller I know is my uncle, period. He lived in India for several years. Four, we love listening to our English teacher, her stories are fascinating. And five, at our school, we have a great library. We like to relax and read there. Okay, so remember, here is very important that you go back to the rule, okay, and see why and when do we use the words, the relative pronouns, and then come back to the sentences to try to see if they fit, okay? So, pause the video, check the rule, and connect the sentences using the relative pronouns. Go, then, come back here for us to check, okay? So, do it now. All right, could you do that? Was it too difficult? So, so easy? I hope it was easy. Okay, so let's check the sentences together and see if you could get them right. Okay, so number two, many people love his horror stories. And then we have the horror stories are often quite shocking. What is the relative pronoun? from these uh, over here that we use to substitute, to replace things. We need to use the word which, okay? So the sentence becomes, many people love his horror stories, which are often quite shocking, right? So what are often quite shocking. The horror stories, okay? Oh, there's an H missing. Now, number three. The best storyteller I know is my uncle. He lived in India for several years. So, which of the relative pronouns we can use to substitute a person, to refer back actually to a person. It's the word who. So we complete by saying who lived in India for several years. Good? Now, four. We love listening to our English teacher. Teacher. Sorry, guys. Quick tip. Her stories are fascinating. Ha! Huh. Here is very important. Do you remember why we use uh, pronouns like his, her, actually possessive adjectives, right? Uh, his, her, mine. When we use them, when we want to tell that something belongs to a person. So, her stories, whose stories, right? The teacher's stories. So, in this case, we need to substitute her by whose stories are fascinating. Okay, do you understand? 
whose stories are fascinating? The teachers. Okay, so that's why we say we love listening to our English teacher whose stories, so her stories, are fascinating. And number five, at our school, we have a great library. We like to relax and read there. So, there refers to a place. And then you remember that when we are referring back to places, we need to use the word where. But now pay attention. We cannot just substitute the word there by the word where, for example, because we cannot say at our school we have a great library. We like to relax and read where. Does it work? Does it sound good for you? Hmm. That's the thing with relative pronouns. We need them in very specific positions in the sentence to make the sentences and the connection of the ideas clear. Otherwise, the sentence doesn't make any sense, right? So that's why here we need to say, at our school, we have a great library where we like to relax and read okay so can we check our answers let's do that wow i don't know what happened here one of the world's greatest storytellers is stephen king who has sold more than 400 million books i don't know what's going on Let's try again. One of the world's greatest storytellers is Stephen King, who has sold more than 400 million books. Let's see. Many people love his horror stories, which are often quite shocking. Then, the best storyteller I know is my uncle. Who lived in India for several years. Then we love listening to our English teacher whose stories are fascinating. And finally, at our school. We have a great library where we like to relax and read. Let's check again. I don't know what's going on. Let's see the answers. One of the words gone. Who has sold more than 400 million books, which was correct. Many people love his horror stories, which are often quite shocking. So, we were correct. The best storyteller I know is my uncle, who lived in India for several years. Also correct. We love listening to our English teacher, whose stories are fascinating. Also correct. And at our school, we have a great library, where we like to relax and read. We were all fine from the beginning, guys. I really don't know what happened. I think it's related to spaces here. The software doesn't get us. No problems. We were right, okay? And I do hope you were right as well. Good? So, coming back here, we have something more to talk about, okay? So, 
before we were exclusively looking at the relative pronouns. But now we're moving further in the concept because some all relative pronouns they introduce relative clauses, right? So remember that clauses in Portuguese we refer to oração, right? When we say, for example, oração subordinada, oração coordenada, right? So, in English, we also talk about clauses, relative clauses. And relative clauses, they have two different functions. We have the defining relative clauses, and we have the non-defining relative clauses, okay? And by using those names, defining and non-defining, we can already see something very clear about what, uh, what is their function. When we use a defining relative clause, we're defining something, we're giving very specific information, and when we are using a non-defining, we're giving some extra information. We're not defining something as something specific, okay? But before we move on, before we uh, go deeper in the concept of defining and non-defining relative clauses, I want you to do a very similar thing to the exercise one we did. You are going to go back to the text again, so the one about uh, everybody loves stories, but why, okay? And you are going to try to find this five sentences over there in the text and complete them just like, here's Pagu again, she loves English, uh, and try to complete them exactly as they are in the text, okay? So, pause the video. Go back to the text and complete the sentences accordingly. All right, guys, so could you find the sentences and complete them? Let's try to do them together now, okay? So, number one, what's the first image that comes to mind when you hear the word storytelling? Then number two, a parent Who's reading a fairy tale to a little child? Three, off they go, out of the cave, down to the place where the best berries grow. Four, the only one of them to return is the friend who's covered in blood. And five, we admire people whose... Oops whose magical storytelling skills capture our imagination. Mm, could you find the same words, the same sentences? Let's check them. Well done. Very good. So remember that that refers back to a, per, uh, a thing, right? So what's the first image that comes to mind? So that refers to image. A parent who's reading. So, who refers to parent? Off they go out of the cave down to the place where. So, where refers to the place. The only one of them to return is the friend. Who's covered in blood? So, who refers to friend? And five, we admire people whose magical storytelling skills capture our imagination. So, who's here is talking about the people who have magical storytelling skills. Okay? Good. So, now, let's check the rule that we have here. Talking about the defining and non-defining relative clauses. So, the rule says... We use a defining relative clause to identify an object, a person, a place, or a possession. Without this information, it's hard to know who or what we're talking about. Then we have these two examples. The man was angry. 
Well, this is a very general question, uh, sentence. Because when they say, the man was angry, I'm not defining this man. So that could be any man, me or any other man in the world. But when we ask the question, which man? I am asking the person to define which man. Oh, the man whose bag had been stolen was angry. Ah, now with this relative, this defining relative clause, I know exactly which man we're talking about. Okay, so for example, if I say the man was happy, then you can say, okay, which man? The man whose daughter was, uh, had graduated, was happy. Ah, now I am defining the man, okay? The book is good. Hmm, but then I can say, the book that is on the table is very good. Hmm, now I am defining the book, okay? So, without this information, it's really difficult for us to understand what we're talking about. We need more definitions. And that's why we use defining relative clauses, okay? On the other hand, we have like the opposite of a defining relative clause, which is a non-defining relative clause. And here, we use a non-defining relative clause to add extra information. We don't need this information to understand the sentence. And we put commas, okay? Commas in Portuguese, virgulas. We put commas around it. So we have the sentence. Stephen King is a famous writer. Very complete sentence. But I can add extra information. Stephen King, who is American, is a famous writer. And what is the extra information? He is American. And how do we know if a sentence or a clause, actually, okay, is a non-defined relative clause? If you can read the sentence and take the information out and the sentence continues clear and the meaning is still there, so, it's a non-defining relative clause, okay? That's just like this example here. If I say the sentence, Stephen King, who is American, is a famous writer. Good. But now, if I take out who is American, this information, this piece of information, I can read the sentence, Stephen King is a famous writer. The sentence is perfect. I know what or who you were talking about. And I don't need the extra information to understand the context. So, non-defining relative clauses are used to give extra information. Okay, so information that we can take out from the sentence and we don't need them to understand the sentence. Okay, so again, defining relative clauses are necessary because Without them, I cannot understand the sentence properly. And non-defined relative clauses are extra information. I don't need them to understand a sentence properly. Okay? Let's practice a little bit and see if you got the meaning, the concept of this. So here in exercise 4, you have complete these defining relative clauses with who, where, whose, or that. Okay, so again, pause the video and complete the sentence with who, where, whose, or that, and then come back here for us to check. Okay, good luck. All right, guys, could you do that? Was it difficult? Did you follow my advice on imagining the sentence without the information or without the words? That is very helpful. That's gold tip, okay? So let's check. Then we have, number one, the house I grew up is next to school. So the house is a place or a thing, okay? So 
I believe here is much more related to a place because I'm talking about growing up next to a school. So all this uh, um, context of the sentence makes me think that where is the most appropriate answer. Okay, then number two, a book has lots of short chapters is perfect for the bus ride to school. So a book is an object. So a book that has lots of short chapters is perfect for the bus ride to school. Then three, a person, and here's clear, right? Who knows a lot of jokes is usually a good public. A good public speaker, right? Four, we went to a lecture by a writer. Books are always on the bestseller list. So, the books, but whose books are this, right? So, here I'm talking about possession. So, we went to a lecture by a writer whose books are always on the bestseller list. And five, the author. Who wrote the famous teen novel, The Outsiders, was only 16, okay? Because here we're not talking about possessions, we're just talking about extra information, right? So he wrote, the author was only 16, but now we have the author who wrote the famous teen novel, The Outsiders, was only 16, okay? Let's check our answers. Well done, guys. Very, very good. Okay. Coming back here, we need to practice a little bit more because this topic is not that simple. Okay. Now, in exercise five, what you need to do, you need to check the sentences that contain non-defining relative clauses. And later, we need to add commas. So, remember, non-defining relative clauses are clauses that give us extra information. So, all the time I read the sentence, I can take that piece of information out. It means we're talking about a non-defining relative clause. Then you have sentences 1, 2, 3, and 4. And again, I want you to pause the video and check the ones you think that contain relative clauses and then come back here first to check. All right, so let's check this last exercise over here, okay? So, we again, you needed to check the sentences that contain non-defining relative clauses, all right? So let's take a look together. Number one says, my brother is someone who's, who, just doesn't like fantasy novels. Now, how do we know if it contains or not a non-defining relative clause? As I told you before, if you take the piece of information out and the sentence still makes sense, it's a non-defining relative clause. But if the sentence is incomplete or it doesn't make sense anymore, it means that it's an defining relative clause, so it's necessary, not extra information. So here, if I read, my brother is someone, and I stop reading, this doesn't make much sense. Okay, my brother is someone, definitely, but what do you want to say with that, right? So, in this case here, who just doesn't like fantasy novels is not a non-defining relative clause, on the opposite. It is a defining relative clause. So here the answer is no. In your case, you don't need to check. Two, fairy tales which were written for children are now being adapted for the movies. Let's read the sentence without which were written for children. Fairy tales are now being adapted for the movies. Well, if I take which were written for children out of the sentence, this sentence is completely fine. And we understand that the fairy tales, which were written for children, this is extra information, I don't need this. The important information is, they are now being adapted for the movies. So, here we have a 
non-defining relative clause because I don't need that piece of information. It's extra, right? Now, number three, the Brothers Grimm, whose stories have fascinated millions of children, lived in the 19th century. Again, let's take the part whose stories have fascinated millions of children out of the sentence and read it again. The Brothers Grimm lived in the 19th century. Again, the sentence is perfect. I can understand exactly what we're talking about and the important information is they lived in the 19th century. So, here we also have a non-defining relative clause because this is extra information. And finally, number four, it's difficult to read in places where people are talking on cell phones. Let's take the part where people are talking on cell phones and read the sentence. It's difficult to read in places. What places? Which places? Where? What are you talking about? You need to complete the sentence. So, when I have this feeling that, hmm, but the sentence is not finished, it means that where people are talking on cell phones is a defining relative clause. This piece of information is extremely necessary for us to understand the sentence. Okay? So, here we do not have a def unknown defining relative clause. On the opposite, we have a defining relative clause. So, let's check. Well done, guys. Very good. I hope you can understand this idea of non-defining means extra information. Defining means necessary information. Okay, this is very, very important. And finally, 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 we have a last part of the same exercise, which is on the two sentences that have, that present relative, uh, non-defining relative clauses, we need to put commas, remember, virgulas. So here, fairy tales, which were written for children, are now being adapted for the movies. What is the non-defining relative clause? Which were written for children right? So, all this part here, as I can take this out of the sentence, it can come between commas, right? So, I put comma, fairy tales, comma, which were written for children, comma, are now being adapted for the movies. Okay, now number two, the brothers Grimm, whose stories have fascinated millions of children, lived in the 19th century. So again, whose stories have fascinated millions of children is extra information. So I can put this information between commas, right? And then you can check. And sentences are perfect. Well done. Usually, when we have the commas, it's much easier for us to check if the sentence, if the clause is non-defining or defining, okay? Because the commas, they, they give us, oh, here is the relative clause. If you can take out the relative clause and you read the sentence without it and it's okay, it's non-defined. If you take out the relative clause and you cannot read the sentence or the sentence doesn't make any sense without the relative clause, it means that it is defining, okay? Guys, we're done with the relative pronouns and the defining and non-defining relative clauses for now. Thank you very, very much for all your patience and also your teamwork for being with me, okay? And now you are going to go back to your study guide and then continue your studies on Unit 5. Again, thank you very much for your time here with me today, okay? See you on the next part. Bye!